Well, here is a beautiful little flower that is very easy to grow. I first saw this little flower growing in a neighbor's yard and I asked her, I said, what kind of flowers are you growing? They're so pretty. There's so much color. And she said, oh, those are just zinnias. I just toss out some seeds every year. And I thought, well, it doesn't get easier than that. And the best thing about this flower is that it is a cut and come again. So when you're cutting your stems for a flower arrangement on either side, will grow more flowers. So right here on each side is going to be a new flower. It will start reaching for the sky and before you know it there'll be another little bloom right there on it. And hummingbirds love them. So if you want to see some hummingbirds in your garden, go ahead and plant you some zinnias. Also butterflies are attracted to the zinnia and other pollinators too. Now if you want to build up a really nice population of swallowtail butterflies, also plant some dill and some parsley that you can let the parsley worm eat because the parsley worm as shown here is actually the larva of the swallowtail butterfly. Now sometimes birds will eat them. So one year I gathered them up and I put them in a little DIY butterfly house to protect them until they developed into a little swallowtail butterfly. So just remember you can protect those beautiful little swallowtail butterflies in your garden by planting dill and parsley and they will lay their eggs right there on those plants and the parsley worm will emerge and you can take care of them especially if you have kids this is a great fun and inexpensive project to share with the kids and I'll leave a link to that video right up here in the corner if you wanted to check it out So the zinnia stems make wonderful flower arrangements and they come in every color except true blue. So you will be able to make just a rainbow of colors in your flower arrangements and you'll be able to bring those into your home or just wherever you want a little pop of color. You can pick yourself some zinnia stems right out of your garden. Zinnia seeds are very easy to save, but they are also very easily crossbred by the pollinators that visit them. I grow many different colors, so I don't know what I'm going to get every year when I replant my seeds, and I think that actually makes it much more fun when you've been growing your zinnias year after year, and you're saving your seed. Your colors are really going to develop into something beautiful. So when you are ordering your zinnia seeds, Keep in mind they come in many different types and some will attract more pollinators than others. So most of mine are called single or semi-double zinnias and they have the large center to attract the hummingbirds and bees and butterflies. But then some of the more beautiful zinnias have a very large head and they're actually more of a specialty zinnia um, and they're oftentimes called doubles or uh, dahlia types and those are beautiful for cutting flowers but they may not attract as many of the pollinators so that's just something to keep in mind when you're ordering your seeds and I'll leave some links to different seed companies below the video of where I have ordered different zinnias so let's go ahead and look at how you can plant the zinnias once you've selected your seed. Now as I mentioned, my neighbor just tossed out her seeds and covered them up with a little bit of soil. And to be honest with you, that's how I've done it in the past too. Now you'll have to make sure though, you are doing this after your frost date. Zinnias are what you call half hardy annuals, which means that they germinate and they flower and they die all within one year. They are very frost tender and must not be put in their flowering position outdoors until all danger of frost has passed. Now I have started these indoors before and then transplanted them out into my garden. And the reason why I did that was because I thought I would get an earlier bloom. And I did, but only by about one week. So now I don't start them indoors. I just plant them right out into my garden. It's a lot easier on me to do it that way. So when you're selecting your area to grow zinnias, you'll want to make sure you're picking a very sunny and a warm location. 
that really needs to be very sunny because zinnias are prone to getting powdery mildew once the temperatures get hot and very humid. You'll notice a little powder on the leaves. A lot of times it won't really affect the blooming of those flowers and you can remove the leaves when you're cutting them but um, you know there are some varieties that are more prone to powdery mildew than others and if I see that one flower is really affected with the powdery mildew I might just remove that completely from my garden. Now if you've had a problem with your flowers not blooming for you in the past it could be that the pH of your soil is around 7 and if that's the case then plants generally will have a harder time taking up phosphorus which is what they need in order to bloom so I suggest just adding a little bit of peat moss to your soil um, you may want to also add a little bit of bone meal but before you really add any kind of phosphorus or nitrogen or anything like that you can always get your soil tested first but if you add just a little bit it probably wouldn't hurt so a nice blend to start seeds outdoors might be to add a little peat moss compost and just a little tiny sprinkle of bone meal now if you're doing this in a square foot garden you you know you would not have to do this and you want to plant one per square So to plant our seed, let's go ahead and move out some mulch so that we have some soil contact and we're not going to put this mulch back over it until they are up and growing. And then I can sprinkle on and add in my soil mix of peat moss, compost, and then it has a little bit of the bone meal in there too. So let's go ahead and plant these. We'll just go ahead and moisten the soil a little bit and put a couple of seeds in here and we'll cover this up with about a quarter inch of soil and go ahead and water it in again. So it takes about three to five days for your zinnia seeds to germinate when the temperatures are around 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit and your nights really should be around 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Now if your temperatures are cooler than this it will take longer for your seeds to germinate and then make sure you mark it so that you don't go back and plant something else here now I am also going to put a tiny bit of fine vermiculite right here on top which will help keep the moisture here and you also need to make sure that you're keeping it misted just gently misted until they sprout now once they are up and growing you can thin them out to about 12 to 18 inches apart it's important that they get that air circulation because as I mentioned they are prone to getting powdery mildew and so they need that air circulation to help dry them out especially after those summer rains. So if you see that you need to water your zinnias make sure you're doing it at the root level and not from up above. So after you have thinned them the appropriate length that will be on most likely on your seed packet and some of them only need about 12 inches some of them may need two feet and then you can mulch around the bottom of your plants. So as I mentioned, it is a cut and come again flower, so make sure you're cutting off those dead heads and this will help promote new blooms and we can use these to save seed from. Also, after a frost, this is the before picture and then this is the after picture, the zinnias will die. They do not like that uh, cold weather at all. So when you're cleaning up your garden, you can also save some of the seeds from the plants um, after they have been hit with a frost. So it's real easy to save the seeds. You'll just break open the flower head and the seeds, um, the mature seeds will be dark and they look kind of like this. It looks like they have a little tail on them and some of them can be white as well but both of them are generally shaped like this and I went ahead and tested the germination on one and it sprouted beautifully for me and I used it the next year in the garden and then after everything is up and blooming and you've done everything you're supposed to do you can go ahead and start making little flower arrangements to put around your house you can leave the leaves on there if you want or go ahead and pull those off if they've been affected by powdery mildew I'll go ahead and pull them off and it's just so much fun to go ahead and cut yourself some flowers and they look great in just a little mason jar as a little country look and you want to cut them down the way I showed you earlier in the beginning of the video. I also like to toss in some amaranth with the flower arrangements because it has a beautiful burgundy color and I'll also leave a link to this below my video. 
Um, I think I got these seeds from Baker Creek. So those make a nice little addition to the flower arrangements. Now many people eat the petals of the zinnias. I personally love the way they look. And so I use them in flower arrangements and I grow nasturtiums for flower petals in my salads. But the kitchen part of my video is just to let you know some people do eat the petals. I like to make just a pretty arrangement and either put it right there on my table or right there in the kitchen so that I can enjoy it throughout the summer. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and also make sure that you click that little bell off to the right of the subscribed button and you'll receive all notifications for my channel. Thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.